good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar on uh, digital RNA sequencing for gene expression profiling. Uh, my name is Raed Samara. I'm a global product manager at Kyogen. And before we get started, I just want to go through a couple of housekeeping items. Um, everyone here is on listen mode only, so I hope everyone here can hear me well, but I will not be able to hear you. Um, if you can please send me a hi or hello in the questions box just to let me know that, I, that you can hear me well, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, I got a bunch of highs and hellos, so hello back. And uh, please use that questions box to send in any questions you may have throughout the webinar. Um, I'll try to get to them as we go through the webinar, but I might have to push some of them till the end of the webinar for the sake of time. And um, another housekeeping item is um, everyone who's attending today's webinar will get a copy at the end of the webinar as a follow-up. And just to give you some background on um, about myself, I'm a global product manager at Kyogen. And prior to uh, Kyogen, I was a postdoc fellow at the National Cancer Institute, uh, studying mechanisms of uh, cancer vaccine or to increase cancer vaccine efficacies. And prior to that, I was at Georgetown University doing my graduate studies on colorectal cancer metastases to the liver. So today's webinar is on digital sequencing or digital RNA-seq for gene expression profiling. Um, we had a uh, webinar last week as an introduction to digital RNA sequencing given by Eric Lader. I highly recommend you to, um, uh, to go back and, and, uh, and listen to this webinar for an introduction on the technology. Um, and also next week, we will have an extensive um, sort of analysis of the, the RNA-seq uh, pipelines that we have put together for, for data analysis. Um, it will be next week at 1 p.m. at the same time, and it will be given by Melanie Husong and Jean Noel below for, um, uh, for the data analysis part. Okay, but today what I want to do is to uh, give you an introduction on digital sequencing using um, RNA sequencing and just go over some of the existing methodologies for uh, gene expression analysis and what we have done to tackle some of the challenges associated with these, with these current methodologies. Um, then introduce you to the Kaiseq targeted RNA panels that we have put together for digital sequencing for gene expression analysis. Uh, show you some application data on how we have used the, uh, the Kaiseq targeted RNA panels for gene expression analysis, and then close off with a summary and questions. So gene expression analysis. Um, we know that gene expression analysis is extremely important and is central to many biological processes and applications, including cancer research, immune profiling, cell cycle research, uh, studying changes in, in signaling pathways, uh, predictive toxicology, and, uh, and also for biomarker development. Um, I'm getting a question about whether we have started already. Uh, someone cannot hear me. Um, we have started, so if you're having trouble with your audio, please check your audio settings because I believe that the majority of people here can hear me well. Okay, so what are the current methodologies and technologies that exist today for gene expression analysis? Uh, broadly speaking, there are four main technologies, uh, PCR-based technologies that, um, that are highly accurate, so they deliver a high degree of accuracy for gene expression profiling. There is whole transcriptome sequencing. Uh, the main advantage of whole transcriptome sequencing is the throughput power. Uh, so this is a technology that allows you to look at every single transcript that exists in your samples. Um, another technology is microarrays. Uh, the main advantage is easy data analysis. This is a technology that has existed for a long time, and the data analysis uh, pipelines have been made so easy that anyone can, can analyze, analyze gene expression uh, profiles using microarrays. And then you have the traditional targeted RNA sequencing approaches um, that is basically a subset of the whole transcriptome sequencing. Um, but instead of looking at, at every single transcript with the targeted RNA sequencing approaches, what you're doing is you're focusing on a subset of, uh, of the genes that exist in the genome. The advantage of the traditional targeted RNA sequencing approaches is that they offer you uh, manageable data. Um, so again, instead of looking at every single transcript, you're looking at a subset of those transcripts, which makes the, the data more manageable and easily uh, interpretable. And also another advantage is that is the low uh, per sample cost um, because you have the capability now to multiplex many samples. 
uh, on the same sequencing run, your cost per sample is going to decrease compared to a whole transcriptome sequencing approach. Um, I got a question that someone missed the first webinar. Is it available for review? It is available for review on kaijin.com. So there is the, 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 the recording itself is, is archived as well as the, um, the slides and the, the content. So please check kaijin.com uh, for, for the archived material. Now, although all of these technologies give you a lot of advantages, there are several disadvantages associated with each one of these technologies. When we look at the PCR-based methodologies, the main disadvantages is the uh, limited sample and assay throughput, which, um, which basically translates to um, a low number of samples that you can, that you can uh, examine per, per run if you're looking at um, you know, uh, if you're using a PCR-based methodology and using just 96 well plates, if you want to look at 96 genes, it's basically one plate per gene. So, so the, your, your throughput capabilities are very low. Um, and it also requires a lot of RNA. So you could end up requiring uh, micrograms of RNA if you want to look at, you know, 96 genes or 100 genes or, or you know, 500 genes. So you need a lot of RNA for PCR-based methodologies. Whole transcriptome sequencing approaches, while they give you a lot of throughput power, they're still expensive. Um, it takes a lot of money to, to sequence, uh, you know, the entire transcriptome in, in, in a sample. And the, the data is so complex that you need, uh, you know, someone with a high degree of, of uh, bioinformatics expertise to analyze all of that data. For microarrays, there's a high background noise, and it also requires a lot of RNA. And again, this can be limiting for, for specific samples um, where you might not get a lot of RNA to run microarrays or the PCR-based approaches. And for traditional targeted RNA sequencing approaches, the main uh, disadvantage is amplification bias. Uh, this is a, a disadvantage that is inherent to, to current uh, targeted RNA sequencing approaches, and I will show you in a little bit how we have come uh, overcome the amplification bias associated with current uh, technologies, uh, and also how we have uh, overcome all those disadvantages um, that are associated with other technologies as well. So the ideal methodology that, um, that one should use for, uh, for gene expression profiling should combine all the advantages of those existing technologies and overcome all the disadvantages of those existing technologies. What we have put together is the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels to overcome all of those disadvantages, yet still uh, deliver the advantages of the current technologies. Um, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels um, is, are basically complete sets of reagents for cDNA synthesis, enrichment of genes, and library construction. And as you will see, um, it's basically the entire system is, is composed of two kits. One is the, um, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels themselves, and then you have the index uh, kits that allow you to, uh, that give you the flexibility to multiplex between 12 and 96 samples in the same sequencing run. So how do the uh, Kaiseq targeted RNA panels address current limitations of, uh, of existing technologies? When we compare the Kaiseq targeted RNA panels against PCR-based methodologies, the Kaiseq uh, targeted RNA panels allow you to profile up to 1,000 genes in 96 samples simultaneously. So you can profile 1,000 genes um, in all of these samples in the same sequencing run, which will, which will decrease the, uh, the cost associated with each sample. Uh, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels require very minimal RNA input, um, as low as 25 nanograms of, of RNA or, or, even, or even lower can be used for, uh, for the, with the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels. So this now enables you to profile um, gene expression uh, analysis in, in those samples that were not uh, accessible with, uh, with PCR-based methodologies because PCR-based methodologies might require a lot more RNA. Uh, with whole transcriptome or against the whole transcriptome sequencing approach, um, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels are very cost effective. Again, because they give you the ability to, um, to multiplex many samples simultaneously, the, the price per sample is going to decrease compared to a whole transcriptome sequencing approach. 
And also the data analysis is much, much easier than a whole transcriptome sequencing approach because first um, you're, you're focusing on a subset of the, tra of the transcriptome. Um, so let's call it a thousand genes or so. Now you're analyzing a thousand genes instead of the 20,000 genes or so that exist in the, in the transcriptome. And what we have put together is um, a set of, of uh, pipelines that allow you to, uh, to go from, um, you know, from gene counts or molecular barcode counts all the way to fold analysis and interpretation through the uh, ingenuity pathway analysis. Um, against microarrays, we have developed highly specific assays. So these, these assays um, are highly specific to the, to the targeted genes. So again, if we're looking at a thousand genes, those, um, those, those assays have been developed to be highly specific to those thousand genes that you're interested in. Um, and again, instead of requiring a lot of RNA, you can use as little as 25 nanograms of, of unmanipulated RNA. So that RNA does not need any enrichment of mRNA or, or blocking of ribosomal RNA. Um, compared to the traditional targeted RNA sequencing approaches that, that suffer from amplification bias, um, we have developed um, a technology, uh, the, the digital sequencing technology that removes amplification bias and PCR duplicates to deliver more accurate results. Um, so along with all of these sort of um, advantages, basically what you get with the targeted, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels is a high degree of accuracy that matches the accuracy that you, that you see with PCR-based um, methodologies. You also, it allows you also to take advantage of, of the uh, power of NGS for, for increased sample throughput. So you can now multiplex many samples simultaneously to decrease the costs. And it gives you also valuable insights through the, the data analysis pipelines that we have developed. So there's a question, does it not include contents for total RNA isolation? So um, uh, no, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels will offer you uh, or, or will contain all the reagents needed for cDNA, um, for cDNA, and anal for cDNA synthesis. Uh, targeted enrichment and library construction, but it does not include any um, any isolation kits. You would have to uh, to purchase the isolation kits separately. But Kaijin has a wide range of, uh, of of kits that allow you to isolate RNA from many different samples. Can I use the Kaiaseq targeted RNA seq kits for preparation of HIV pool gene sequencing for PAC biosystem or Roche sequence the SQL systems? Um, unfortunately, the the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels are not compatible with the PAC biosystem. They are compatible with um, systems from Illumina and Ion Torrent. And does it work for FFPE? If so, what is the input? Um, they have been uh, op optimized to work with FFPE samples. The reason is the, the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels use small amplicons. So they, they would work with RNA from, uh, or degraded RNA from FFPE samples. Um, as for the input, it, it really depends on the quality of that RNA. Um, the guidelines are part of the handbook. So I highly recommend you to check out the handbook for guidelines for FFPE samples. So we've developed the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels as the only, really the only sample to insight digital RNA sequencing solution for unbiased gene expression profiling using NGS. It's a sample to insight solution because it takes you from, uh, from, from sample isolation all the way to not just data analysis, but also interpretation, which means if you have, if you see differentially expressed genes, now what, what, do, what, what does that mean from, from a biological standpoint? Um, at the interpretation step, you can connect all these dots together and make more sense of, of the data that you're seeing or the gene expression profiles that you're seeing in your samples. Um, but it is a sample to insight because it takes you through, through the entire workflow going from sample isolation through targeted enrichment and library construction um, into the NGS run uh, on, on, again, uh, the Illumina platforms or the ion torrent platforms and then data analysis there are two levels of data analysis, uh, one for counting the individual barcodes that have been, that have been detected and then uh, translating that into full changes if you're comparing many samples simultaneously. And then um, the interpretation part through the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis Platform. Um, it's an integrated library preparation, which, which means that uh, library preparation is done through, through PCR. We do not use ligation-based methods anymore, um, as you will see in the workflow in a little bit. 
It works with any RNA sample type, so giving you that that uh, you know an, an added level of flexibility um, as long as you can isolate RNA from from your samples using um, the the Kyogen kits or any other kits uh, that 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 you currently use. You can use the system for gene expression analysis. It is compatible with most sequencers. Again, we've tried the MySeq and NextSeq in in house, um, but uh, but the panels are compatible with any. Uh, platform from Illumina and any platform from the Ion Torrent um, family of sequencers. Um, and also, we offer complementary data analysis tools for full change analysis. So, as I mentioned, in the, for the data analysis part, um, our pipelines will take all the molecular barcodes and convert them to gene counts and also allow you to do full, uh, full change analysis. And that full change, full change analysis can then be fed into ingenuity pathway analysis pipelines for, for interpretation. So a couple of questions that came in. Could you explain how digital sequencing removes amplification bias? I will get to this in just a little bit. Um, and then another question that came in, what is the sensitivity for variant calling for this technology? So this technology is not used for variant calling. Um, the initial application for the Kyaseq targeted RNA panels is only for gene expression analysis. Um, the variant calling is not part of this initial application uh, or the initial set of applications. Um, this could be coming down the line, but as it stands now, this system is only for gene expression analysis. So how does how do how do we use molecular barcodes to remove amplification bias or PCR duplicates? Um, what I'm showing you here is the actual problem of of amplification bias and PCR duplicates. We're starting with two samples just to simplify this um, this example. We're looking at gene A in sample one, and we're looking at the same gene gene A in sample two. So after you isolate um, mRNA and convert it to cDNA. Um, this cDNA has to go through several rounds of amplification because that is what is needed currently for, for, the, for the sequencing platforms. Um, the input material has to go through some amplification rounds. Now, when, when this input material of cDNA goes through some, some, some rounds of amplification, what you, could, what you could end up with is some of these transcripts being um, preferentially amplified compared to others. So if we look at gene A that exists in four transcripts in sample one, after the four, after the several rounds of amplification, you could end up in a situation where you where you amplified those four transcripts, you know, many times, and ending and, and ended up with twelve transcripts or twelve copies of these four copies. Now, if we look at gene A in sample two that exists only as a single transcript, uh, because of again amplification bias and PCR duplicates, you could end up with six copies of this individual transcript. Um, we've started, if we look at the original number of transcripts of gene A in sample one and sample two, we started with a four to one ratio. Basically, we have four transcripts of gene A in sample one, and we have one transcript of gene A in sample two. But because of the amplification bias and PCR duplicates, we ended up with a ratio of, of 12 to six, which basically translates to a two to one ratio. Um, thereby not, not preserving the, uh, the original state of, uh, of genes in, in sample one and sample two. So again, we started with a four to one and we ended up with a two to one because of the amplification bias and PCR duplicates. Now, what we have done to overcome this issue is to use molecular barcodes. With molecular barcodes, we barcode or tag each one of the transcripts, each one of the cDNAs that, were, that, we, that we generated from the original transcripts. We barcode each one of those with a unique molecular barcode. The unique molecular barcodes are, um, it's a stretch of 12 nucleotides, um, and, um, and each one of these barcodes is unique. And so what this, what this enables us to do is, instead of, after all the amplification rounds, instead of counting each one of these, uh, each one of these reads, what we do is we count uh, each one of these barcodes. And because, because the barcodes captured the original state of, um, of the transcripts, this will preserve the ratio of genes um, after all these rounds of amplification and preserve them to match what we started with. So we started with a four to one ratio and we were able to capture um, all these, these cDNA molecules with individual barcodes. 
um, again, instead of counting all the reads that are coming off the sequencer, what we do is we count the molecular, the unique molecular barcodes that um, that, that were captured during this uh, during all the, the the workflow steps. And so, by counting the unique molecular barcodes, we end up with a four to one ratio because we were able to capture four individual transcripts from um, for for gene A and sample one and one transcript for gene A and sample two. So instead of, again, instead of counting individual uh, reads or transcripts, what we're doing is we're counting all these individual molecular barcodes to preserve the ratio of genes that we started with. So we ended up with four to one when we started with four to one, as opposed to if you go back to the, to the original um, example that I showed, if you're counting the reads uh, instead of the barcodes, you can end up distorting this original state of genes instead of ending with a, with a four to one ratio, we ended up with a two to one ratio based on those uh, reads. So this is the this is the idea and the principle of molecular barcodes and how molecular barcodes can help us overcome the issue of uh, PCR duplicates and amplification bias. If there is anything that needs to to be clarified with the molecular barcodes or tags, please let me know. Um, I can go into uh, into even more more depth um, about the um, molecular barcodes. Um, a couple of questions that came in is ingenuity pathway analysis also complementary. Um, the ingenuity pathway analysis is not complementary. The only complementary levels of that analysis are the primary, what we call the primary and secondary. The primary is the pipeline that will convert molecular barcodes to gene counts. And then the secondary uh, pipeline is, um, is that pipeline that will translate all these gene counts into fold changes. So these two levels are complementary, but the ingenuity pathway analysis is not. But what we have done is, the, is to make the output of the secondary data analysis pipeline uh, complementary, uh, not complementary, um, uh, basically, we, we made that output um, match the input that is required for the ingenuity pathway analysis. So it's basically an easy transition from that secondary pipeline into ingenuity pathway analysis. Does the system work for bacterial RNA? Um, we have not tested bacterial RNA, um, and the analysis pipelines that we have put together will map, um, have been developed to map reads to, the, um, to human RNAs. So um, I don't think at this stage that we can use the RNA panels for bacterial RNA. This, the, the technology in theory should work. Um, it just, it's just something that we have not developed so far. How is tagging done? Um, I will show you that in a bit. So when we look at the, um, again, how the CHI-seq targeted RNA panels overcome the, the challenges associated with traditional targeted RNA sequencing um, uh, approaches, um, we've, what we basically have done is we were tagging each uh, cDNA template with a unique molecular barcode, and that allows us to overcome the, the challenges of, uh, of, of PCR duplicates and amplification bias. And by, by tagging each one of these cDNA templates, we're able to count the number of barcodes. And by doing so, instead of uh, doing the quantification based on reads, uh, we're doing the quantification based on these uni unique molecular barcodes. So this is how it all works. Um, this is the workflow of the CHI-seq targeted RNA panels. You see on the left, the individual steps that can all be uh, accomplished in six hours, going from an isolated RNA sample all the way to a library that is ready for quantification and sequencing. Um, and on the, on the right-hand side, you see a schematic of all the different steps in, in how they work. So once RNA is isolated, you go through a cDNA uh, synthesis step. Um, again, with the cDNA synthesis step, you're just converting all the mRNAs into, um, into cDNA molecules. After the cDNA synthesis step comes the primer extension and molecular barcoding step. This is where we are capturing um, all the cDNA molecules with, um, with these fancy primers. Those fancy primers consist of three different parts. You have the gene-specific sequence that will be uh, complementary to the gene that you're interested or the genes that you're interested in enriching. This is followed by the 12 nucleotides of, uh, for, for that molecular tag or molecular barcode. <clears throat> and then this is followed by a, a, a universal um, uh, sequence that, that will be used for library construction. 
So in the first primer extension and molecular barcoding step, what we're doing is we're, what we're doing is to extend um, the the cDNA molecule molecules that we were that we converted from the RNA sample. Um, after doing so, we go through a reaction cleanup. So we're, we remove these gene-specific primers um, from, from, the, from the first step. And this is going to be followed by the first stage PCR. Um, this is accomplished by a gene-specific primer 2. Um, so this second gene-specific primer is complementary. It has sequences that are complementary to the genes that we are interested in enriching. And again, this is followed by uh, universal sequences for library preparation. One thing to note over here is that gene-specific primer 1 and gene-specific primer 2 never see each other. You see that, that each one of them is used in a separate stage or separate, uh, separate step. Um, what this does is it, it allows us to minimize primer dimers. So because they're not seeing each other, again, they're used in separate steps, we're able to minimize primer dimers. So after the first stage PCR, um, now we have a, a fragment that contains the gene-specific uh, sequences, it, uh, and then this is followed by the molecular barcodes or molecular tags, and then it is followed by, um, by universal sequences that, that, that are used for uh, library, constru library construction and indexing. So we clean up the, the gene-specific primers, and this is followed by the second stage PCR, again, where library is constructed and samples are indexed. Uh, are indexed. Um, this is accomplished by uh, another set of primers that are complementary to the universal sequences that we introduced in the previous steps. And then in purple and black, you see those, uh, those sort of uh, you know, sample indexes that will allow you to multiplex many samples simultaneously. After you go through a reaction cleanup, now you have uh, you know, library fragments that are ready to be quantified and, um, and sequenced. So I've received a bunch of questions. I think for the sake of time, I'm going to push those questions till the end of the webinar. So if you can just please uh, bear with me for another maybe 20 minutes or so till I get till the end and I'll answer those questions. So for sample indexes, um, you can use indexes for the Illumina platforms or the ion torrent platforms. And these kits allow you to multiplex either up to 12 samples or 96 samples. Um, <clears throat> the 96 uh, indexes for Illumina come in two different flavors or two different formats, a tube format and an array format. The tube format is more flexible. It allows you to use, you know, whichever, whichever sample indexes you're interested in using. The array formats are more convenient. Um, in the sense that all these indexes have been pre-aliquoted into, uh, into wells of, of 96 well arrays, but it's, um, it's not as flexible as the tube formats in the sense that it's a, it's a one-time use. Um, if, if, you, if you have up to 96 samples, the array format is much more convenient, but if you have less than 96, I highly recommend using the tube formats because they're more, more flexible. The ion torrent um, indexes also come in, in 12 or 96 indexes, and the 96 index uh, indexes for ion torrent come in only an array format, um, simply because if, if we were to, to offer a tube format, this would end up being 96 different tubes, which will um, which is very cumbersome to, uh, to use. So instead of 96 uh, different tubes, we've, we've generated only the, um, the array format for the uh, 96 indexes on ion torrent. But again, these give you the flexibility to, um, again, to multiplex either up to 12 or up to 96 samples. Um, again, and this, this decreases the cost associated with each one of these uh, samples that you want to run. Um, and you can, because these, um, um, <clears throat> because they are sample indexes, you can you can multiplex again up to 96 samples on the same flow cell, or um, or the same chip for ion torrent platforms. Um, we've developed these 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 panels to um, uh, to deliver very uh, high out, out or outstanding performance metrics. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the performance metrics that we have looked at. Um, all of these performance metrics are covered in the first webinar. So again, I highly recommend you uh, to go back and, and check out the, uh, the webinar that is archived at kaizen.com. But what we've done is we've compared the, the performance of the Kaiseq targeted RNA panels uh, to, to qPCR. So individual um, assays using qPCR uh, compared to the sort of the multiplexed um, assays in the Kaiseq targeted RNA panels. We see a very high degree of concordance between the results of qPCR and the results of the Kaiseq targeted RNA panels. 
Uh, specificity is extremely high. We define specificity as those on-target reads. We're seeing more than 97% of the reads mapping back to those, those genes that we want to enrich. A very high degree uniform, of uniformity, around 20% of the mean. Um, so 90, 97% of, uh, of those reads fall within 20% of, uh, of the mean. Reproducibility, when we compared the libraries that, that were sequenced in lab one versus lab two, we see a very high degree of concordance also between the two different labs. Sensitivity, you can detect down to 0.2 copies of RNA per cell. So it's a very highly sensitive uh, system. Um, as I mentioned, the average amplicon is, uh, is, is, is small. It's around 97 bases. Um, the range is between 95 and 130 bases, making them compatible with RNA extracted from FFPE samples. And the um, if you use if you're using a um, you know the, the ion torrent or, or even the, the, the Illumina platforms, um, 150 base single reads are, is more than enough to uh, to get accurate data. Um, you don't really need to run paired end reads if you want to. You could, but as long as you can get enough, uh, you know, up to 150 bases of, um, of of single reads, that should be enough for for the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels. <clears throat> In terms of content, we have developed more than 170 pathways and disease-focused panels. Um, this builds on our experience and know-how in, in building um, qPCR arrays. So what we've done is we've basically taken the content of all these 170 uh, qPCR arrays and translated them to panels on the Kaiseq um, RNA platforms. Um, all of this, uh, all of that content has been uh, has been drawn from many different resources, like external databases, scientific publications um, in PubMed, and as well as the um, Kaijin's own knowledge base, which is basically the Ingenuity platforms. Um, uh, the content has been manually curated by PhD scientists to come up with basically eight um, different large uh, 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 panels, like the cancer transcriptome, inflammation and immunity trans the transcriptome, the signal transduction pathway finder, and so on and so forth, as you see on, on this slide over here. But we've also taken the content of all the qPCR arrays and translated them to, uh, to RNA-seq panels. So we have more than 170 different pathway and disease-focused panels for, for human RNA analysis only. Initially, we are targeting uh, human, human samples. Um, as the the line as the line grows, we will uh, as the line grows, yeah, we'll we'll target uh, also content for for mouse, rat, and so on and so forth. But the initial application again is for gene expression analysis for human samples only. But if you have any any mouse uh, mouse samples that you're studying or rat samples, please let us know. I'll show you how you can contact us at the end of this webinar. Uh, please let us know. It's something that we might be able to accommodate as well. Another unique feature of the RNA-seq panels are the built-in controls that take you know, all the guessing out of your analysis. Um, there are two sets of controls. There's the genomic DNA assays, and then there's the housekeeping uh, gene assays. The genomic DNA assays uh, control for any genomic DNA contamination in your RNA sample. Um, it's basically a great way to make sure that all the reads that you're that you're uh, looking at and all the molecular barcodes are not capturing um, any genomic DNA. If there's any genomic DNA contamination, you'll be able to see those uh, those you know molecular barcodes that are coming from genomic DNA in our analysis. So it's a it's a great way to control for any genomic DNA contamination. The housekeeping gene assays are used to normalize data and make sample-to-sample -sample and run-to-run -run comparisons possible. Um, it's, it's a very flexible um, sort of system. It allows you to use one, two, or all of the housekeeping genes that, uh, that we have put together, or even none of those housekeeping genes if you do not want to use any housekeeping genes. Or you can define your own uh, housekeeping genes if you want to, uh, to use those for, for the analysis. But these two, two sets of built-in controls are a, a great way to, again, control for any contamination and to make those, those comparisons possible. So another offering that we have put together are custom panels. Um, we, we understand that there's no one content that can satisfy the needs of every single um, customer or researcher. So uh, in order to, to give you the flexibility to, to define your own content, we've put together the custom panel offering. This can be easily done on the online custom builder that should be available uh, sometime next week. 
it's a very easy uh, builder to use in the sense that it's only going to ask you to define your list of genes that you want to enrich and, and, uh, and analyze. And it's also going to ask you to define those, those uh, housekeeping genes that you're interested in. So you can choose your own gene content from uh, close to 55,000 human genes and long non-coding RNAs in the human, uh, in the human transcriptome. Um, again, it requires a, an input of, of the, the list of genes. It's going to ask you for the you know, proper controls. Do you want to use uh, genomic DNA uh, controls? And we highly recommend that you use genomic DNA controls. And then it's going to ask you to select those housekeeping genes. Do you want to select a subset of the housekeeping genes that we recommend, or do you want to use all 10 sets of the housekeeping genes that we have put together? And as an output, um, once once you've put put in the uh, the required inputs, uh, it'll take anywhere between five minutes and maybe up to thirty minutes to 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 uh, to build that panel. As an output, you'll get a list of genomic coordinates for the primers that have been designed uh, specifically to your uh, to, to to your to your input of genes. Um, another another feature of the of the panels is what we call extended panels. Using the extended panels, you can extend the content of an existing panel by adding up to 25 additional genes. And again, this can be easily done on the custom builder um, that again will be available hopefully by uh, by next week. Uh, but what you could do through this offering is to to choose a uh, to choose a panel and add up to 25 additional genes to the contents of that panel. Um, these additional uh, additional genes will be mixed with the contents of that of that panel that you chose. Um, so you still end up with all the contents being um, being physically present in, in in an individual tube. But here's an example of what you would get for for a custom panel. Um, again, after five to thirty minutes or so, the custom builder is going to um, to spit out the following. It's going to give you the um, the catalog number of that custom panel. Um, as you can see over here, um, another uh, you know one one of the unique features is that all the designs that you have submitted are all saved under your account by clicking on this view design request tab. You can access all of the 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 custom panel requests that you have submitted so far. Um, they are there for you know for easy retrieval. You can you can look at the the bed files again. You can order the the same panel over and over. Um, it's a really great way to just kind of keep all of your your designs in one place. Um, but also and, and also there is a link um, on the on the custom builder where you can contact us easily for any questions that you may have. But um, in addition to the catalog, uh, to, to, the, to the number, the custom panel um, uh, um, catalog number, uh, what you get is an, an option to download the bed files and a summary file. And I'll show you an example what those what the summary file looks like and the bed file looks like. But it basically tells you, um, you know, which uh, we, in which regions of, of those genes that you're interested in targeting, where where we were able to uh, to design the um, uh, the primers and applicons, and also you can uh, configure and order uh, those custom panels online. So everything can be done basically on this custom builder, from designing it to configuring it and ordering it. But here's an example of the um, of the output. Uh, so this is a summary file of a custom panel. What you see are the gene IDs and gene symbols um, on the far left. The gene strand is the strand of the genome on uh, where where the gene where the gene sits. Basically, you know, we tell you which strand were used to um, uh, to, to 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 design the uh, the contents for that specific uh, for that specific gene. It shows you the amplicon coordinates defined by um, by you know the the chromosome and the five prime location and three prime location. Um, it tells you what type of control assays, if you have chosen uh, the reference, uh, the housekeeping genes and the genomic DNA controls. It specifies this in, in column G. It tells you that this assay is basically a reference gene and it tells you that this specific assay is an assay for genomic DNA contamination. Um, column H that is labeled single exon, it tells you if it's a one, it tells you that all the, pr the, the, the primer pairs uh, or the primer pair that has been designed for that specific um, for that specific gene they all sit within a single exon um, so again if it is a one that means that the primer pair um, sits within within an individual exon for that gene uh, the gen code basic rna is it tells you the number of rna transcripts that can be captured by by a specific um, by a specific uh, amplicon design 
um, the number of uh, of RNAs that could be matched. Uh, so, so in column I, that, um, that tells you just the total number of uh, of RNAs that exist. And in column J, these are the it tells you the total number of uh, RNAs um, that can be captured by uh, by the by the by the design of that specific gene. Number of off-target genes. It tells you, um, it's it's kind of a rough indication or prediction of um, the sort of the non-specificity of those primers. Um, if if we believe that those primers are going to target any off-target genes, we will list those here. We'll list we'll list the number of of off-target genes and which which off-target genes uh, we think those primers will bind to. Um, and then, if there's anything in the genome that, uh, or in these in these amplicons that could not be uh, uniquely mapped, we also flag those in um, in one of the columns. So this is an example again of the of the summary file um, output that you would get from from the custom builder. The bed file can be easily imported into a uh, genome browser to actually see where the amplicons sit within a gene. Um, I believe this is uh, the NRAS gene, so it shows you, you know, on, on which exon we were able to design the primers. Um, and, and so, just as a, again as an example, it shows that the primers for for the NRAS gene that we were uh, able to design for such a custom panel sit on this specific exon of the gene. So to kind of summarize the um, the features and benefits that I that I went through um, in in those in those previous slides, um, first is the molecular barcodes. Really, this is the this is the main uh, the main feature of the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels. Um, they offer a lot of benefits. First, increased accuracy. So again, instead of instead of analyzing total reads, we are analyzing now molecular barcodes. Um, to to get a better um, uh, better quantification of of gene expression levels, um, they also allow you to optimize uh, the the read budget. So so after after the initial run, you'll you'll be able to use information from molecular barcodes to uh, to see how you can optimize the the the, um, the read budget and optimize your sequencing runs to to make the most out of your sequencing runs. Uh, you can use the information of uh, coming off of molecular barcodes to make a call about whether a target is expressed sufficiently in a sample. One of the main challenges with, with looking at RNA is that, you know, certain genes are heavily expressed versus other genes that, you know, could be lowly expressed in your samples. Um, looking at molecular barcodes, we can uh, we can tell whether a target is is you know expressed sufficiently or is it is heavily expressed or lowly expressed. You can also uh, use that information to, um, uh, to to QA FFPE samples in terms of being able to read these rare, rare targets. Um, so a lot of benefits coming off of of molecular barcode information. Um, six hours only are needed to go from RNA to sequencing ready libraries. So, so you can, the, the, there's a quick turnaround time um, that allows you to construct libraries in basically less than a day. Minimal RNA input um, that preserves your precious samples. Um, again, there are certain samples that might not, might not yield micrograms of RNA um, because you need, you know, 25 nanograms or less. You can, uh, um, you can preserve your precious samples. Small amplicons have been developed to, uh, to make the panels compatible with FFPE samples. There is a wide range of content. More than 170 different panels um, have been put together uh, for a wide range of applications. The panels themselves are platform independent, so you don't have to switch between different panels for different sequencers. Um, you can use the same panel for, you know, for, for Illumina platforms or ion torrent platforms. Um, a, a high degree of flexibility to, uh, to index up to 96 samples, which decreases the, the cost per sample. Uh, custom and extended offerings, you can now build your own content um, by, by the, the custom and the um, uh, extended offerings of the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels. And then you have the built-in controls um, that allow you to confidently compare samples. Again, think of the, the genomic uh, DNA contamination assays that allow you to control for any genomic DNA contamination. And then you have the housekeeping gene um, uh, assays that allow you to make those sample-to-sample -sample and run-to-run comparisons possible. 
So to go through an example of how we use the, um, the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels in an application data, what we've done here is um, we used HEC-293 T cells um, that were treated with 90 different chemical inhibitors. These chemical inhibitors target 90 different um, points within, within different uh, pathways that are heavily implicated in the development and progression of cancer. Um, after we've treated those, um, these cells with the 90 different chemical inhibitors, we, um, we isolated RNA, converted it to cDNA, and then we used the signal transduction um, uh, RNA-seq panel um, that interrogates 421 genes, uh, including the 10 housekeeping genes and the six uh, genomic DNA control genes. Um, so we used all of these different assays to, um, to basically ask the question, what happens from a gene expression profiling perspective when we treat these cells with these 90 different chemical inhibitors? What kinds of, um, what kinds of genes get upregulated? What kinds of genes get downregulated um, after inhibiting these specific pathways? And in one day, we went again from RNA uh, to, to sequencing ready libraries because it takes simply six hours to go from RNA to, to libraries that are ready to be quantified and sequenced. Uh, we were able to go from, from um, RNA, from total RNA isolated all the way to sequencing ready libraries in one day. Um, we used the NextSeq for, for sequencing. The parameters for NextSeq are shown, um, are shown over here. We followed the same, you know, the, the standard procedure for uh, denaturing the, the libraries and loading them onto the NextSeq. Um, we used uh, dual, uh, dual indexes, um, again, to multiplex um, uh, 96 different samples all in the same run. And we used a single, single 151 base pair read with a custom sequencing primer. Um, this custom sequencing primer is part of the, um, of the kit itself, so you don't have to buy this um, separately. It comes with the, uh, with the indexing kit, and you can use this custom sequencing primer for your next seek and, and as well as uh, also the, the MySeq runs as well. But just to kind of give you an example of, of what happens to, um, to the data as it goes through the, uh, the data analysis pipelines, after the sequencing was done, we loaded the FASTQ uh, files onto the primary analysis uh, sort of pipeline. Um, and the primary analysis pipeline, what it does is that it's going to take all the reads uh, for each sample and run, run those reads through several filters where you know smaller reads are being um, are, are being filtered out um, any reads that are not uh, uniquely mapped will get filtered out and so on and so forth so it goes through a series of filtering uh, steps um, to uh, and what we end up with is just the reads that are used for molecular counting but all of this is um, is is nicely shown in this excel file it shows you how the reads have been filtered um, and the number of reads that were used for molecular counting, it shows you that the total number of molecular tags or molecular barcodes that have been detected for each sample, and then the reads per molecular tag, um, and so on and so forth. So it gives you a lot, of, a lot of numbers just to kind of show you what we have done with those total reads that, that were used from the FASTQ files. You can dig deeper. You can go down to the individual gene level. Um, so what you're looking at here is, again, just a, a subset of, um, of all those 421 genes that, uh, that we looked at with this panel. Um, you can clearly see, um, you know, what, about 10 genes or so of, of those 421 genes in the, in the top part of this Excel file. Then you see the genomic DNA control assays, and then you see the reference or housekeeping gene assays down, down at the bottom. But what you'll be able to do is to do this sort of um, intra-sample comparison. You're looking at how the genes are, um, how the expression levels uh, change within the same sample. So again, we're looking at here only maybe 10 genes or so, but you can clearly see that some genes are differentially expressed compared to others. Um, we can see that there is no genomic DNA contamination because we don't see any reads coming off of the uh, genomic DNA control assays. And then we can use the information at the bottom of this, um, of this file for, um, for the housekeeping genes. Uh, but we also, what we can do also is to compare all the different samples for the same gene. Um, so instead of looking at, uh, you know, 421 genes across the same sample, we'll be able to compare, let's say, the XRCC6 uh, gene across the 96 samples that we have um, analyzed. And you can clearly see how that same gene is differentially expressed across the different uh, samples, indicating that the, the perturbation of specific pathways will lead to the differential expression of this gene across the different samples. 
Um, so the what what you could what what we what we would also be able to do is to do the uh, you know full change analysis. So we can we can compare the control groups to um, the individual the individually treated groups and look at how each gene um, how each gene changes when we compare the two uh, the two conditions together. Um, that is also something that can be done through the the, the data analysis, the complementary data analysis pipelines that we have put together. Um, so you can take all these full changes now and upload them to the secondary data analysis, uh, whereby you get these sort of nice comparisons and nice graphs. Um, or you can take the same information and upload it to the Ingenuity uh, Pathway Analysis Pipeline. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about data analysis, and I highly recommend this, uh, please attend next week's webinar. Um, where Melanie and John Noel will go through the um, an, an, an extensive um, sort of uh, presentation on how the data analysis portals work. But just to kind of give you an example, if we are controlling, if we are comparing group uh, group one, this is a um, the the cell, you know uh, cell lines that have been treated with an HDAC inhibitor, and we compare them to the control group. With that secondary level of analysis, we can um, we can put these plots together, uh, the scatter plots or the cluster grams, to to actually look at uh, the 421 genes all in one shot. Um, this basically shows you what genes you know have been have been upregulated in in control in the group one uh, samples compared to the control group, and which genes have been downregulated in the in, in in that sample. Um, and you can also take a look at it through through a cluster gram. Um, but again, I highly recommend you. Um, attending next week's webinar for that analysis. And um, you know, to, to, uh, to extend this analysis, instead of just going through the gene counts and the full changes, you can take that information and feed it into uh, the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis platforms to start connecting these dots. So again, what happens when you inhibit HDAC in these, in these cell lines? How are the different uh, pathways downstream of, um, of the, the target of HDAC inhibitors? How are they, how are they being affected by, uh, by this type of manipulation? You'll be able to connect all of these dots together and make, make even more sense of the data using the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis platforms. But just to also kind of compare, um, <clears throat> you know, the different parameters um, of, of using the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels to real-time PCR. If Let's say if we want to use real-time PCR on those 96 samples and interrogate those 421 genes, how do the numbers look like now? Or, or in, in terms of the material required, runtime, hands-on time, and the cost per sample. So looking at the materials uh, required, you only require that one pool of primers using the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels to, to interrogate the 421 genes that we interrogated in this example. Um, compare this to 105, 384 well plates if you want to interrogate the 96 samples or the 421 genes across 96 samples using real-time PCR. A huge amount of difference in terms of what, what is required in terms of material. The runtime, all it took us in terms of the sort of the, the equipment runtime, uh, 14 hours on an, on an XSeq, we were able to analyze the 421 genes across 96 samples. It would have taken us about 310 hours if we just used two hours per plate uh, for if we want to use real-time PCR. Hands-on time, um, roughly three hours for 96 samples. Uh, all that workflow can be done in 96 well plates. The, the amount of hands-on time, of course, is going to vary between user to user. Um, but you know, within three hours is, is, a, is a reasonable time to go through the, um, the workflow for 96 samples in a, in a 96 well plate. Um, but if we if we use one hour per plate using the real time PCR um, setup, we would we would need about 105 hours just of hands on time. And even if you're very efficient and you drop this down to let's call it half an hour per plate, you're still looking at about 50 hours or so compared to three hours for the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels. Cost per sample, because we were able to multiplex 96 samples on a next seek run. Um, even when we factor in the, the cost of sequencing runs, um, this comes down to $65 per sample um, when, when you use the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels for 421 genes. 
uh, compared to, to about $239 per sample if you want to run um, the 421 genes on a real-time PCR platform. So again, a lot of advantages, a lot of differences um, using, you know, by, by using the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels compared to the real-time PCR platforms. You're decreasing the cost per sample and you're becoming more efficient in terms of the, the time required and also the material that is required to look at 421 genes in 96 samples. So as a summary, um, the benefits of the Chi-Seq targeted RNA uh, panels and workflow, you require very minimal um, total RNA. This is unmanipulated total RNA. You don't have to enrich for mRNA. You don't have to block any ribosomal RNA. You take the RNA as is and throw it into the, into the workflow. Um, random molecular barcodes assist in, in the enhanced quantification of transcripts being interrogated. Um, again, because they, they overcome the issue of, of PCR duplicates and, um, and, uh, and, and, and um, ah, amplify or the, uh, the inefficiencies of, um, of amplification, uh, you actually get a better assessment of the, um, of the gene, uh, gene expression levels that you're looking at. The design is highly flexible. You can, you can look at um, anywhere between 12 and 1,000 targets in the same sequencing uh, reaction, and you can look at up to 96 samples per sequencing run. Um, we've put together a complete streamlined integrated workflow that takes you from sample to insight, um, you know, including the in ingenuity pathway analysis. So all the output from the secondary data analysis uh, pipelines is compatible with the input that is required for ingenuity pathway analysis to make that experience more integrated and, um, and, and less cumbersome. Um, so just to kind of remind everyone of how, how the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels can overcome the disadvantages of current technologies. Um, you know, you can profile, it gives you higher throughput compared to PCR-based methodologies. It gives you a more cost-effective uh, solution and easier data analysis approaches compared to whole transcriptome sequencing. Compared to microarrays, it requires less RNA and it gives you highly specific assays. And more, and, and probably the most important part is when we compare it to the traditional targeted RNA sequencing approaches. Um, with the Chi-Seq targeted RNA panels, you overcome the, the issue of amplification bias and, uh, and PCR duplicates by using the barcodes that deliver digital sequencing. Um, this is for the data analysis part. Again, if you're interested in knowing more about how the data is analyzed by the, the primary and secondary pipelines that we have put together and how the data is interpreted using the ingenuity pathway analysis, I highly recommend attending uh, next week's webinar by, by Melanie and, and John Noel. Um, it will be uh, literally next week um, in, um, at, at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time as well. So this brings me to the end of, um, of my part. Um, I want to thank you all for, uh, for attending this, uh, this webinar. You can, uh, if you have any questions that you might forget to ask today or so, you can easily contact us at the phone shown over here and the, the couple of email addresses um, shown here as well. Um, visit us please at kaijin.com to access any of the previously recorded webinars um, or if you want to also sign up for, for next week's webinar, um, you can do so at kaijin.com. You can subscribe to, to our channels to get, to, to, to get all the updates that we send out um, on, on a daily basis. So again, thank you all for attending. And what I'm going to do now is to go through the list of questions that have uh, come in. If you have any questions that you have not submitted, please do so in the next uh, minute or so, so I can get to them. So one of the questions is, is it possible to use RNA less than 25 nanograms? Um, so so the, um, if you think about the theory of, um, of, of, the, of the workflow, there is no limit to, um, to, to the amount of RNA that you could use. But one thing you have to keep in mind is um, as you use less RNA, the chances of capturing the, uh, the different RNA transcript just decreases. So if you, if you have a, um, a specific gene that is lowly expressed, if you use less than 25 nanograms, you know, your chances of capturing that specific uh, transcript or that specific gene goes down. So you could use less, it's just your, you know, the, 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 the chances or the capabilities of capturing these lowly expressed RNA goes down. 
what are the steps for customizing a RNA seq panel? Um, the steps are basically you need to just upload your list of targets and you need to uh, to tell us whether you want to use the genomic DNA assays um, and uh, which which uh, housekeeping gene assays that um, that you want to use. Really, these are the only steps that are required for bu building your own custom panels. Is it applicable for microRNA analysis from rat tissue? Um, microRNA analysis is not possible with these panels. Um, there will be uh, there will be some microRNA panels coming down the line in 2016, uh, but the the Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels are only for the analysis of mRNA for gene expression analysis only. How many unique uh, capture tags are present for each RNA? There are, um, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but uh, but if you basically, if you think of the, the, the number of possible tags, you have 12 nucleotides. So this is basically, you know, 12, uh, 12 to the fourth, you end up with millions of, of possibilities for, uh, for the tags in a panel. So uh, are the same 10 housekeeping genes in all eight of the available Kaiaseq uh, panels? And if so, how were these derived? So um, yes, so the, the, all the eight um, Kaiaseq targeted RNA panels contain the 10 housekeeping genes. Um, and basically the way we derived those or we, we decided on, the, um, on those housekeeping genes is um, it's basically after testing many several assays against many several uh, 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 targeted genes, uh, we wanted uh, a set of genes that are um, whose expression is pretty consistent across different uh, different organs, and that's how we derived, or that's how we we um, we decided on those uh, those ten housekeeping genes. What will be the cost if uh, if you use twelve samples instead of ninety six samples in your example? Um, Probably I, I have not done the math, but um, maybe it would increase by maybe five five to ten dollars or so. Um, again, just a rough estimate. Um, you know, if you, if you go to the website, you'll be able to get the costs for uh, for a panel for twelve samples versus ninety six samples, and you'll see how how they differ. But um, it will increase slightly. Does the cost include sequencing costs? So, so yes, the, the example that I showed previously, um, or the applications example, the costs that I've shown um, include the cost of sequencing on a, on a next seek. Before pooling, how can I quantitate libraries? Um, you can. There are a couple of ways. Uh, we we always recommend qPCR because that is the most sensitive quantification method. Uh, you could use the Kaiaseq library quantification kits uh, for quantifying um, uh, RNA libraries or libraries from the RNA panels. Um, but if you don't want to uh, to invest three hours, you can also um, you can also use the um, um, Kayaxel or or uh, Bioanalyzer from um, from Agilent to uh, to do the quantification. But we we always recommend qPCR as a way to quantify libraries. Can your analysis tool generate SNP analysis uh, of data? So as I mentioned earlier, the initial application is only for gene expression analysis. You cannot use this data to call variants uh, from, from RNA yet. Um, the initial application right now is only for gene expression analysis. Okay, uh, have you observed any batch effects? Um, you know, we have, we, the, the panels go through a rigorous QC, uh, QC testing procedure. Um, I don't have the information on batch to batch uh, uh, variation, but, uh, but, but I can tell you that if there is any, it will be very, very minimal. Um, if I have the bioinformatics tools to do variant calling myself, um, so you know, if you have your your tools to uh, to call variants within within RNA, that is um, that is completely up to you. I mean, you could use, I guess, the the the, the information coming off the panels for this application. Um, the one thing you probably need from us is the is primer sequences, which we will be more than happy to provide after a panel has been purchased. Um, just to make sure to trim off the primer sequences so you're not calling any variants within the primer sequences themselves. Can you reliably call mRNAs using Kaiaseq data? Should we use gold standard method qPCR for validation? Um, we don't really see, honestly, a, a need for validation. The, um, the assays are highly sensitive and, and uh, we've compared 
um, the data that you get from the Chi-Seq RNA panels to qPCR methods, and and they are there is a high degree of concordance between what you get, um, uh, you know, out of uh, the qPCR assays and the uh, Chi-Seq targeted RNA assays. Does the price vary on the number of genes input into the custom builder? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, the price is going to depend on the number of targets that you're interested in looking at. Uh, do you do global RNA seq? Um, we don't. Well, I mean, you can target any gene in the uh, in the human uh, in the human transcriptome, um, but this is not a whole transcriptome sequencing approach. This is a targeted um, RNA sequencing approach for um, for up to a thousand genes in in the same reaction. Um, so so while you can take a look at every at any transcript, um, you are limited by a thousand genes at a time. How many probes are present for each transcript? Um, we don't use probes, so just to clarify, these are primers, they're not probes. Um, you, and, and we only have a couple of primers per, uh, per target, so only just two, two primers for each gene that you want to look at. If I want to use uh, human genes for pigs, how much homology do I need to, to expect? Um, to be honest, I, I don't know the answer to that question. That's going to depend on, um, on how similar the pig genome or transcriptome is to the human transcriptome. Um, if you have the list of targets, you can send that to us and, and we'll definitely take a look at, at, um, at, at whether, whether it is feasible or not and, and what it would take uh, to get this done. Uh, okay, how many sites are targeted for each transcript? We only target one site. Um, it, it, that, that could be, you know, within the same exon um, for, for the primer design, or it could be uh, different sites within different, uh, different exons. But it's, it's, it's only per target, per gene, we only have one site. What is the turnaround for custom designs? The uh, it's uh, it's two weeks from the time we re we receive the order, so um, it'll take us two weeks to build the to 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 build the panel. The design itself um, is usually very very quick. Again, within five to thirty minutes, you'll get the design of the panel. And if you decide to purchase the panel, then it's two weeks from the from the time we receive the order. So it's a fairly quick turnaround time. So these are all the questions I see. Again, I want to thank you all for attending. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach us at the uh, emails shown here, brcsupport at kaijin.com or kayawebinars at kaijin.com. Uh, thank you again and have a great rest of day. Goodbye.